My dear reader friends have a very close look at these two circuits. Upon a closer look, you can tell me that these elements are in parallel and then this is in series and you can further solve it by successive reduction. You have already done in your grade 10. But if you look at the same circuit of the same size, you can see that these elements, we cannot say that they are in series or parallel. And look at this one. We cannot say that it is in series or parallel. So we cannot solve it by successive reduction. And these kind of circuits where we cannot identify which elements are in series and parallel, we will be learning to solve them today. Right. My dear kids, one of the prime methods to solve these kind of circuits is using the Kirchhoff law. And look at these circuits that have been asked in the previous year need papers. We cannot identify which elements are in series or parallel either. So you can say that this particular method of solving circuit becomes very important from the need perspective as well. So that particular rule is the Kirchhoff law and just stay tuned at the end of this lecture, you will learn and become crystal clear about the Kirchhoff law and its application. Have a look at that. So you see that Kirchhoff's first law, there are two laws of Kirchhoff. So Kirchhoff's first law is called as Kirchhoff's junction law, KCL. Let's understand how to apply it. It says that we don't, we don't produce or we don't destroy the current at the junction. So you see that it is pretty much like a traffic junction. So you see, let's say this is the situation. Let's say this is the situation. Here you have one road. This is the, this is the traffic junction. And you see that here the traffic roads are div dividing. You see that whatever traffic, uh, you know, comes from here, if, if 10 cars are coming from this side, no car is going to be destroyed over here, ideally. So we can say that six cars will go this side and four cars will go this side. If 10 are coming this way, six are going that way. So four must go that way. So no new cars are created or destroyed at the junction. Similarly, you can say that whatever current is coming from one part and it is dividing into two parts. And that means at junction, we cannot save the current. We cannot destroy the current. So whatever current is entering the junction, the same current has to leave it as well. So we can say that current entering the junction is same as current leaving the junction. All right. So that's the main idea behind the KCL, right? Now you see that let's apply it. Let's apply the KCL. It is also called as nodal analysis. So here we have it. So imagine that it is a node. Let's say this is the node. A node means the place where the current may divide. So this is the node. Let's call the node as A, right? So here you see that multiple resistors are there, right? And multiple resistors are there like this. All right. So right now this situation is going on. Let's call them R1, R2, R3, right? And let's call it the potential here is let's say 10 volt. We don't know the potential at point A. Potential here is 20 volt. Potential here is zero because it is grounded and we have to find uh, something out of it. Let's say we have to find potential at point A. So what will you do? How will you find out that particular part? So look at this situation. We can say by applying the KCL, Kirchhoff junction law at the point A, right? So we can say that current entering the junction, current entering the junction is same as current leaving the junction. All right. And you know that from the Ohm's law, V equals to IR. So I equals to V by R, right? So you see that the current, let's say current is coming this way and it is dividing like this, right? So whatever direction of current you may want to assume, you can assume it, right? If the assumed direction is wrong, the answer will come up with the negative sign and that will give you the idea that the assumed direction was wrong. So you can go ahead with this one. So let's say that if the current is moving like this, that means this is at higher potential, this is at lower potential. So 10 minus, let's say potential at this junction is VA, right? So what will you do? 10 minus VA upon R1. This is the current entering the junction. So write down on this side, 10 minus VA upon R1, right? Now, this is current leaving the junction. This is current leaving the junction. You see that these currents are leaving the junction. So write them on this side equals to, you see that uh, this is current is moving in this direction. That means this is higher potential. This is lower potential. So VA minus 20 upon R2. VA minus 20 upon R2 plus VA minus, now you have to join it first. This is the main idea. You have to join it first, then the current will start flowing. So VA minus 0 upon R3. VA minus 0 upon R3. All right. So you see that as soon as you turn this thing on, 
the current divide uh, you know current will start dividing and this equation will hold true now you will solve it and get the value of va out of it you just need to know the value of r1 r2 r3 let's say this is 5 ohm this is 10 ohm this is uh, 3 ohm let's say so you can put the value of r1 r2 r3 and upon solving it upon just putting the value of r1 r2 r3 va will be the only unknown variable and you can solve it out have a look, look at this situation right have a look at the situation here you have this particular point at 20 volt this particular point at 5 volt this is grounded so as soon as you turn the switch on the current will start flowing right this is at 0 volt you can say and we have to find what will be the potential at this point so let's call the potential over here is x let's say that current is entering like this and it is leaving the junction in this particular fashion so just apply it just apply it we have to find what will be the potential over here at the junction so you see that current entering the junction is same as current leaving the junction so you see that this is the current that is entering the junction so it is going to be 20 minus x upon 2 20 minus x upon 2 that is equals to current leaving the junction so current leaving the junction is here it is moving like this so x minus 5 upon 4 plus this is x minus 0 upon 2 all right so just solve it and you can get the value of x this is the potential at this particular point so i hope the idea is very very clear like how to apply the kcl you just have to look at the node you have to simply look at the current that is entering the junction and you have to just equate it by the current leaving the junction this is going to be a very powerful tool when you are going to solve much complicated circuits let's look at one more thing this is the second law this is called the kirchhoff voltage law now when we talk about the kirchhoff current law it is based on law of conservation of charge that means at the junction no new charge is created or the charge is not destroyed so whatever charges are, are entered the same charges have to leave right so that is conser conservation of charge now the kirchhoff second law is uh, basically kvl that is called as that is dependent on uh, law of conservation of energy you see that let's say here we have a tall building right and in that tall building we are just taking a small ball or a person or ball ball is better we are taking that ball from the ground to the top right so we can say that its potential energy is increased when it is at the top right its potential energy is increased but when you drop it back to the ground and now it is again at the same point a what is the energy right now we can say the same energy that was there when, the, when it is started so now you see that in the entire loop in the entire loop you started from point a and you came back at point a what is the change of energy that you have observed so we can say that in the entire loop we get some increase in the potential energy let's say 20 joules right but when we came back we lost that 20 joule so the change of energy is zero now you see that every time whenever you are observing the flow of energy if you are observing in the entire loop you will say the change observed will be zero and that is exactly what Kirchhoff said if you are observing the change of energy or the potential over here so you see that if you are observing the change of energy in the entire loop that will come out to be a zero if you are starting from a certain point and you know look coming back to the same point so the same thing is happening over here in a closed loop the algebraic sum of all potential differences uh, and emf is always zero have a look at that how are we going to apply it so that you can better you know connect it in a in a more practical way have a look at this situation Kirchhoff second law right how to apply it so look at look at this situation this is the loop method right have a look at that but before you apply the loop method you need to be very clear with two things what are those two things you see that you have to know about what is potential rise and what is potential drop you must understand that particular idea you see uh, this is a resistance right and it's a very common notion that across the resistance we can only get the potential drop but that is not correct while applying the kvl you have to be very clear about this idea you look at that right let's say the current is flowing in this direction right this is the direction in which the current is flowing this is the resistance r right now you are observing let's say that this is u right you are observing the flow of current you are observing the resistance in the direction of current right you are observing the resistance in the direction of current or we will say that 
we are applying the KVL across this resistance in this direction. Right now, you see that when we apply, the, when we are observing the resistance in this direction, you see that in the direction of current. So current will flow from higher potential to lower potential. So this end must be higher potential. This end must be lower potential. We are observing from higher to lower potential. How higher potential to lower potential. So we are observing a potential drop. So in this direction, we are observing a potential drop. How much is going to be the I into R? Right. And now, if the same thing is happening across the same situation, exact same thing is there. Current is flowing like this, resistance is R, but you are observing right now in this direction. Right. All right. So now you see that. Now you are observing in this direction. The same situation is there, the same current is there, but the direction of observation has been changed now. But since the direction of observation has been changed, you are observing from lower potential to higher potential, lower potential to higher potential. You are observing lower to higher. So what you are getting? Potential rise in this direction. If you observe this phenomena, you are observing potential rise. You see that you are observing a resistor opposite to the flow of current. So you are observing a potential rise of, of the same amount. Okay. So if you are observing, this is the direction of observation, not the direction of current. If you are observing the flow of current across a resistor, right? If you are observing a flow of current across a resistor in the direction of current itself, then you will observe a potential drop of IR. But if you are observing a resistor opposite to the direction of current, then you will get a potential rise of same amount IR. Now let's talk about the EMF of a battery. So here you have it. The batteries will supply energy to the flowing charges. But you see that this is the higher potential and this smaller thing is the lower potential. If you are observing this battery in this direction, right, this is the direction of observation. So from higher potential to lower potential, from higher to lower, you are observing a potential drop, right? So how much potential drop you are observing? If the battery has EMF E, so you will observe a potential drop of E volt, right? And if you are observing lower to higher, so lower to higher, you are observing a potential rise of same EMF. Got it? So this is the idea and we have to apply this idea while applying the concepts of KVL. Look at that. In this situation, we have to find the current across R1, R2, R3. Try and apply it by using KVL. How to, how to do that? Now, let's say uh, the current flowing in this way, current flowing in this particular R1 is X, right? And current flowing through this uh, second arm is Y. So uh, just think about it. If you, if you apply KVL at this place, X is entering, Y is coming out this way. So the remaining current X minus Y must go this way. Now try and apply the KVL over here. Look at that. Let us observe this loop in this direction. And this is the second loop. Let us observe this loop in this direction. We have to find the current in R1, R2, R3. So what will be the current through R1? Current through R1 is simply X, right? We have to get the value of X. Current through R2, what will be the current through R2? That is Y. And what will be the current through R3? What will be the current through R3? That will be X minus Y. So we need to get the value of X and Y and X minus Y to get the values of current through R1, R2 and R3. This is what we want, right? This is what we have to find out, right? This is our aim, we can say, okay? So just first of all, get the values of X, Y, and X and Y, and then finding the values of current will be very, very easy for us. Let us apply the KVL in the first loop, in the loop number one, right? So when I say that, apply the KVL in this way, this is the direction of observation. So we will observe every element across this loop, right? You see that? Then that means when we are going to observe this uh, battery, we will follow this direction. So we are observing like this from lower potential to higher potential, right? We are observing in this direction. This battery is observed in this direction from lower to higher with this resistance is observed in this direction. This element is observed in this direction. This element is observed in this direction like this, right? So in the first loop, you will say KVL is applied. That means potential rise that you have observed during this loop will be same as potential drop that we have observed, right? So how much potential rise we have observed? We are moving from negative to positive, lower potential to higher potential. So you are observing a potential rise. How much is that? E1. So write it on the rise side, on this side, 
E1, right? Then you move across this resistance R1. You are observing this resistance in the direction of current. Current flows from higher potential to the lower potential. So you're definitely getting a potential drop in this direction of current. How much is that? X into R1. So write it on the drop side. How much is that? X into R1. All right. Now you see that the current is flowing like this. So you see that X minus Y current is flowing like this. So what will happen? You see, uh, when you observe this element, you are observing from higher to lower potential, plus to minus higher to lower potential, you are observing a drop. E3 is on the drop side. R add it on the drop side. Now, you are observing this resistance also in the direction of current. So, write down X minus Y into R3 on the drop side. So, that is equated. So, you see that E1 equals to this value, right? E1 equals to this particular value, right? Now, when you do that, you will have a relation between X and Y. Now, if the values of E1, E2, E3, and similarly R1, R2, R3, they are given. So you can just put the values of E1, E2, E3, and E1, E2, and whatever. E1, and E2, and E3, and R1, R2, R3. These values must be given. You can put them, and you will get an equation between X and Y, right? What will that give you? Equation between X and Y, right? Now, you can same similarly apply the KVL in the second loop. In the second loop, apply the KVL, right? In the second loop, if you apply the KVL, so what will you do? You see that potential rise equals to potential drop. That is your concept, right? That is your concept. So in the second loop, what will you do? You see that start from anywhere. So you look at that. You are observing this element in this direction, this element in this direction, this element in this direction, this element in this direction. Now look at that. This element is observed in the direction of current. You will observe a potential drop across a resistor, right? So what will be the potential drop? You see Y into R2. So Y into R2, right? The value of R1, R2, R3 will be given in the question if it is 1 ohm, 2 ohm, 3 ohm, whatever, right? So uh, I use, now when you're observing this element, so observing from higher to lower, higher to lower potential, you're observing a drop of E2, write it on the drop side. Now when you're observing this resistance, you see that the current was flowing X minus Y, in that direction and you are observing opposite to the direction of current. So you are observing rise of potential or drop of potential across this one. So we are going to say that because the current is flowing this way and higher to lower, current is going to flow from higher potential to lower potential. This is how the current is flowing across this one. We are observing from lower to higher. We are observing from lower to higher. So we are going to get the potential rise. How much is going to that? X minus Y into R3. X minus Y current into the resistance. This is going to be potential rise across this one. Now, you are observing this battery also from lower potential to higher potential. Lower to higher is potential rise. So, E3. Rise it, write it on the, this side, E3. Now, the values of E1, E2, E3, R1, R2, R3 will be given in the question, right? E1, E2, E3, R1, R2, R3 will be given in the question. You just put them and you have another equation in X and Y. R3, R3 E3, you, you know, R2 or E2. These values are given in the question, as I said. So you have another relation between X and Y, right? So you have two equations and two variables now. So you see that by looking into these two loops, you can found the two equations of X and Y. Solving those two equations will give you the values of uh, current across these three resistances. You see that by looking into these two loops and applying a simple law helped us to find out a simple principle or simple values in this particular situation, right? You see that. Now, can you say that the, you have only these two types of circuits? No. There are many more complicated circuits you can have, right? And there are circuit solving. There's going to be circuit solving in detail. You can have a special circuit where the connecting wires will be there, where the ladder problems will be there, you know, the infinite circuits will be there. Now, and in KCL, KVL itself, there will be multiple circuits as well. Now, to practice all that, you can look, go through the one shot that I have prepared for you, right? And you can get a lot of practice along with the DPP as well. And for that, you can just go to the channel, PW Neat English, where I have already given you a detailed, you know, uh, way of solving the circuit so uh, problems, right? And there are so many different kind of situations we are going to uh, learn that how to handle them, right? So just stay tuned on the PW Neat English channel, right? Stay there. All right.